All right, um, this is the week we're going to be covering creating trees, which is going to require a combination of, of both ZBrush and Maya together. Everybody turn around and watch me. Stop playing on your computers. Trust me, this one you're going to want to watch. Okay. All right, so um, let's, go, let's go ahead and get into Photoshop also. Because what you're going to do is you're going to utilize your textures.com. Oops. Let's go back to that. Textures.com. And it's great for this particular exercise because it's got some... What you're going to create is a leaf brush, and you're going to, you want a leaf brush that has alphas. In other words, all the areas around the leaves are going to be transparent, and you've got a lot of leaf choices to choose in here. And you're going to create a leaf pattern in Photoshop. You're going to take that pattern with the alpha channel attached to it and apply it to geometry in Maya. You're going to take that geometry from in Maya, take it out into ZBrush, and then create that um, pattern to be a, a um, an insert brush inside of Maya. And then we're also going to tackle um, building trees from scratch inside of Maya. Not Maya, but, but, but ZBrush. All right, I've already downloaded these. Uh, let me go over here to the um, bridge folder. And fact, let me come over to the student work files. No, we'll do this. I made a new folder inside of my Maya. There we go. Called trees. All right. And I have... Um, Source images. There we go. And these are my source, source images I get to play with. Now, let me kind of show you how I want you to be thinking, as I want you to think creatively. So, we're going to start with this simple pattern. Then, we're going to end up with something a little more sophisticated. Okay? So, the idea here is I want to create a nice leaf brush. That's going to give me some variety in my leaves. So if I open this up in, in Photoshop, as we are now doing, I want you to think about the best you know, leaf brush in terms of its variety and size of your leaves and, and, and stems. So here we go. We have a leaf sitting on top of um, a transparent layer. Everybody watching me? So I'm on top of the transparent layer here. First thing I'm going to do is what? In Photoshop, make it a, make it a, a com convert it to a smart object. That way I can resize anything on my layers and maintain its quality. Command J, duplicate it again, and I'm going to want to just kind of alter it a little bit. If I go to Command T for free transform, alter option, click right at the base of the stem here, I can start kind of, you know, taking it off to the side here like so. Get, a, get Give it a different look and feel. In fact, I can take this and even make it a little smaller. I can play with this one here. So hold the Shift key and Alt together. I can kind of inverse that a little bit, kind of bring the stems together just a bit, and then even give a little bit of rotation, maybe, maybe something like this, okay? I can do the same thing, duplicate this one, Command J here, Command T, Alt or Option, click on the stem. That puts a rotation point down here, which allows me, okay, it's going to freeze up on me again like it always does, so... All right, now, come back, rotate this somewhere, something like that, okay? If I want to, 
I can hold down the ultra option key. I can bring this down a little smaller to add a little bit of variety in here. Okay, so that's going to be my brush. Now, what I need to do is I need to alt save this out as a PNG. Okay, now I'm going to just pull this up a little bit, pull this down, select all of these leaves, layers, shift click, first one, shift click, or the last one, command or control G for group. Then if I move around the group, I can, you know, resize this, alter it, but this keeps it convenient. I'm going to save it, command shift S, and I have it inside my Maya projects folder, tree source images so i'm going to call this one um, branch branch and leaves number three all right now this needs to be a png png is, is a format that we use often for the web because it has the ability to to commit the transparent areas to an as an alpha channel alpha simply means all these transparent areas are going to go clear when we bring it into any 3D program or place it on the World Wide Web. So <coughs> to do so, the shortcut is Control or Control or Shift, Command or Control, Shift, O to Option. All three modifiers held down. Control, Shift, and uh, and, and uh, Alt, and then hit S, and that brings up the Save for Web option. Why save for web? Because traditionally PNG files were used for the web. So now what I want to do is I want to save this out as a PNG right up here under the preset. By default it'll probably be like GIF which is also another popular format that has a limited color range for the web. But what we want to do is we want to save this as a PNG 24. Make sure transparency is selected, and then that's it. Leave everything else default. Go to save. Save it where? I was going to save it back to my desktop, my Maya projects folder. Go back down to my tree. Inside the tree, I have my source images. There they are. And I believe um, one of the source images we had was leaf. Leaf brush 003. Okay, and then we save it. And when it's done, it'll close out. So now it's in the folder. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of Maya next and we're going to create um, something like this. Okay, this is going to be leaves that are going to be mapped onto polygons. So that's actually. Let's close this out and close that out and let's go fresh. So file menu, new scene, and uh, don't save it. We're going we're to go fresh here. So shift right click and I'm going to go to a plane and place it right down here. Hit the A key, get close to the plane. Now I'm going to reduce, you can, I'm going to reduce the number of these. Now some of the, um, Examples you see, the artist will actually bend the paint plane a little bit. Um, I want to keep this simple, but what you guys can do is you can come in here and you can you know, alter, bend the plane, alter it a little bit if you like. So I want to keep it much simpler. So I'm going to go over here to the, part, the shape and take out all of the subdivisions. Okay, so once they're out, I'm going to place on my object here. So a lamper's already been, been attached to it automatically. So whenever uh, Maya creates one of these little predefined primitives, such as a plane here, a UV map is already there. It's called a lamper. Um, if we come over to UV, UV editor, we click, you can see that's your UV map. It's already there. All right. So we're going to apply an image. Go to my color. And what image are we going to apply? A file, right? Image. And let's make sure we're going to 
my desktop. Let's go to my Maya folder. I didn't really associate a new set of folders yet or source images. So source images, it should have been. Go up here, Maya. I'm sorry. I want to go over to tree. All right. And on the tree, I should have source images. And I believe we called it leaf and branch number three. There it is. You notice how all the areas around the leaves are transparent? Mm -hmm. All right. So we click open. It's a set attached to it. Hit the six key. And there it is. So if I target the geometry, um, let's go hit the E key. Rotate it upwards like so. W key. Kind of bring it up, okay? We've got um, some geometry. Transparent. Okay, so now we want to kind of be able to view this in three directions, three-dimensional directions, to make it look like a whole bunch of these leaves are actually overlapping themselves. So to do so, is that we have a trick. Commander Control D duplicates my layer. Hit my E key for rotation. We kind of rotate it off to the side, like so. Okay. In fact, I can take this one and probably rotate a little more like this. Hit my W key. Maybe move it off to the side a little bit. Kind of rotate it around to see what we got. Now we can do more of these, right? In fact, we will. Command or control D again. R key, E key, I meant, for a to a slightly different rotation. Maybe what we'll go do is hit the R key and just make this one a little smaller. Now bring it around. Okay. Hit the E key for rotation and do something like this. Kind of overlap a little bit. Hit the W key, bring it on down, and we're going to inspect it. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a little trippy, huh? Okay, there we go. Now, what do we need to do next? Select all of your layers and do what? Combine them. Combine them. There they are. So let's save this out. So Command S. And I'm going to make this a little scene file so I don't lose it. Go back to my Maya hierarchy. Go back up again. There's my tree folder. Go back into my scenes. And I have a leaves in there already. I'm going to call this one leaves number three. Okay. Let's save the file. Now, I need to get this into ZBrush. Let's get into ZBrush. Let's see. I thought I already had it open here. Um, I do. Right there. Let's make a new scene. Don't worry, you'll learn how to do it in just a few minutes. So let's go to um, new document. There we go. All right. There we go. So, oops, I don't want that. New document. All right. So go back to Maya. So if you don't have, with Maya, if you don't have ZBrush on your system, you're going to have to export this out as an OBJ. We talked about that workflow. That's all been recorded on the videos. So go back into Maya. Now, because I have ZBrush and Maya on the same system, I can go to my Go Z panel and click Go Z. So the object is selected. Click on Go Z. There it is. Okay. There, so I'm going to click and drag it, right click and drag, and there's my object. Hit the T key.
there they are. See them? All right. So the trick here, actually, I'm going to I'm going to undo this. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Let's go to my document and just make a new document and I'll share with you why. All right, let's go back into Z into Maya. I need to flip these UVs. All right? So if I go into my UV editor, right? Here is my UV toolkit. And whenever you put anything in Maya, for some reason, Maya just flips everything around upside down vertically. So as an artist, with you knowing that, you need to just do it ahead of time. Okay. Um, here, if I go into the, I think it's under the modify tab here, flip. If I come right over here to this little checkbox and select it. Um, you can flip vertical or horizontal. I'm going to flip vertical. Watch your UVs here when I click it. Click apply. It flipped upside down. Did you see that? The UV map coordinate flipped upside down. So did the leaves. The leaves are now upside down. If I click it, watch me again. If I go to horizontal and click apply, that's horizontal. I'm going to go back. I meant to do vertical. Um, click apply, it flips back up. Hit it, hit it apply again, it flips upside down. Maya needs those upside down. It just flips it. Who knows why? It just does it. So once it's done, we can go apply and oh, I didn't want to do that either. Um, I got to go back to the UV map and, and turn it back around again. UV editor, okay. And come back over here to my modify flip. Now, apply and close. There we go. I did it too many times. All right, there it is. So, Command S, I'm saving the file. I already saved it. Okay. Now, we're going to import it into Go Z using Go Z. Now, when you, when you, Go Z is done through ZBrush. When you, when you activate Go Z, it's going to ask you a whole bunch of the programs to load on there. We already did this, I already recorded it. So, watch those videos. All right. So, Come back here, hit the Go Z button. It comes back. Click and hold and drag. There's my object. Hit the T key to go into the edit mode. See, and there are all my different polygons and shapes. Now we need to apply our texture into here. Okay, let's do it here. Now let's go over here. And we have our texture map target it, we need to go tell it what texture to put on it. Click on the surface and target import the texture. We got to go back to our desktop again, right? So go to my desktop, my Maya folder, the trees folder, the source images. It was called brushes three, right? There it is right there. Brushes number three. Double click it. There it is. Now, remember that alpha that's around there? That's all black. But in the texture map, if we come right down here, see that transparency option? We can make all that stuff go away. Now we need to see both sides. So that is under display properties. Double-sided. Boom. Okay. Double-sided. So I just showed you a workflow of getting a, a an object out of, a texture object out of Maya and bringing it inside of um, ZBrush. Now, what we're going to do is this is going to be the basis of, of, of populating our tree with a whole bunch of different leaves. Okay? But what I want to do is I want to create this as an insert brush. I want to make it a brush for an insert brush. So, um, 
I'm going to kind of get a, a, a face on view, holding the shift key, have a nice face on view. Pull that on up there. And if I hit the B key for the brush, right down here at the bottom, it says create insert brush. It's that simple. Hit it. New brush. And there it is. We now have a brand new insert brush. So in, in insert brushes, it's just basically creating a brush from geometry. Now, if I want to save this so that this is always up here whenever I open up ZBrush, I will click on this symbol here with that brush activated, come right down here at the bottom once again, save as, and you have to save it inside its brushes folder. And the brushes folder is inside the, the ZBrush installation folder. So on Windows, it's going to be under PC, go to my C drive. On my C drive, I got program files. Program files is where 64-bit um, file programs go. The program files 86 is where all the 32-bit um, installation programs go. You want to be in the 64-bit. So double-click on program files. Go find Pixelogic, the company that makes, that makes uh, a ZBrush, right there. And in Pixelogic, I've got two versions of ZBrush, 2019 and 2020. I want 2020. Next, I want to go to my brushes folder, ZBrushes, right there. Double click it. Inside ZBrushes, I want the insert brush IMM. I double click that one and look at all the different insert brushes that they've already given you. So we're going to add our brand new one to this. So we're going to call this one what? Leaf. Leaf brush. Zero zero three. We'll keep it all one word. Leaf brush zero zero three and save. See, now it'll always be in there. Okay. So if I come over to B for brushes and then I for insert brush. I -M I I M M. Let's see. Do I have I M M brushes? I M M curves. I M M parts. Yeah, they're all in here. I should have my mine should be in here somewhere. Well, it's there. Trust me, it's there somewhere. Okay, there's my brush. All right, so it's done. So, what I want to do now is I want to create a tree. Now this is going to require that you kind of do a little bit of research. So we come over to Google, all right? Go to a good old friend Google and we want uh, pictures of trees. And you're going to get to just research it out as usual and get ideas. If, find some dynamic trees with roots and all to find out, you know, how you might want to kind of create the branches of the trees. All right, so I'm going to go kind of just create something in ZBrush real quick. And what do you think I'm going to use? Z-spheres. That's right, Z-spheres. Yep, I'm going to use Z-spheres. So let's go over to my light box. And there's my Z-sphere. Double-click it. And we don't, um, yeah, we don't have to save changes to that. There we go. And it uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, there's my Z-sphere. I'm going to hit the X key, which takes off the symmetry mode, right? So I don't want symmetry on at this at this time. That'll be the base. Click a little sphere. Hit W. W for move. We're going to kind of bring it up to the side a little bit. Hit the F key. Q key allows me to put another sphere right here. W. Move it up. 
like so. Hit the F key, Q key, another sphere. Hit W to bring it up. Actually, I'm going to bring it up like so. Okay. Um, hitting the F key. In fact, if we want to, we can kind of bring it on back a little further this way. Make it make it easier on us. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in the move tool. I can come up here and start playing around with this a little bit. Maybe hit the E key to resize this a little bit. Okay. Um, Q key, another sphere. W, move it on up. Q key, another sphere. W, move it on up. E, resize. I'm going to make that a little smaller. Okay. Put some branches on this guy. Q key. Oops, I hit the A accidentally. A takes you to the geometry. A is out. Um, Q key, a little sphere here. Let's go ahead and bring it over to the side. W is extended out a little bit. Q, another little sphere up here. Make it a little smaller. W, bring it on out like so. Okay. So it's going to take time to do some trees. Q key and use a reference. Please use a reference. E key, make this a little smaller. Q key, make another sphere. W, bring it on up. And you're just playing. Have fun and play with this. We'll go, well, we'll go a little further. We'll just do Q key, a teeny little one off here for smaller branches. W, bring it on out. Q key, another teeny little one like that. W, bring it on out. Okay. I'm just looking at it look like a hand. Uh, give it some three dimensional. I'm in W, right? Make it more three dimensional. Kind of pull it over the side, pull that to the side, pull that. And we'll make one more branch. We have one coming just off to the side here. So Q key here, W, pull that out, E, kind of Q, another little, little W, pull it on out, Q, teeny little one right like this, W, pull on it out like so. Okay. All right, now we need um, roots for the base, right? I think you guys get the point here. Um, Q key, W, pull it on out. Q, add a sphere, W, place it on out. And of course, the roots never grow in a straight line. They're kind of like, yeah. You might want to put something that's growing on top of or something, but you guys are getting the point. I'll put a, another couple of roots here. Q, put a sphere. W, pull it on out. Q, another sphere. W, pull it on out. Okay, so there. Um, W, pull it on out. Q, W, down, starting to create. And you can E key, starting to resize. I can resize any of these. That's going to be kind of like, you know, well, makeshift tree, so to speak. All right, now, I won't go any further than this. We're going to hit the A key. There we go. There's an A key, and that's going to be the basis. Now, what you're going to have for your project is you're going to have all types of, of branches, smaller branches extending off each stem. And when you're done, you're going to texture this base. This has to look like bark, or I will not give you credit for it. It has to look real. And you're not going to do it by throwing textures on it. You're going to model it into this thing. What tool would we use? Uh, Cordova. 
excellent clay buildup. Come right over here, C key uh, for, for the clay buildup, and clay the build right there. Okay, and you're going to start building up. Yeah, it's not you want it, you want it. I'll show you how to how to how to apply a um, displacement map to this a little bit later. But right now, start you know building your texture into your tree. You're gonna put little you know notches in here. And in order for this to be successful, you have to have a reference. Get a tree that inspires you and, and use that as a reference to start building your textures. Okay, so um, the whole idea is how to bring these leaves on here. So I'm going to um, mask out the areas that the trees are going to go on. C key, paint in. These little areas right in here. Bring it up to the other side. C. I'm sorry. Control key. And I can start to paint in all the areas that the leaves are going to be painted on to. Bring this around. Control. I can even drag and drop you know, a selection or drag a selection around these little areas here. Okay. Um, shift, not shift, but just control click on the object will soften up the edges. Ask me to paint, control click on it will soften the ed edges a little bit. Now, on the tips of these things, we're going to add our leaves. To do so, once I have my trunk, once I say, okay, this is where I want the, want the leaves to start spawning from, right? I'm going to come right over here, and I'm going to target fiber mesh. So I get this whole menu down here. So what I need to do is I need to preview what this is going to look like. Click on preview. Look. Boom. Looks hairy. Right. Looks hairy right now. Okay, let's get in closer. And we can modify this. You can look at it like, what the hell? All right. Under your modifiers, by default, this is closed up. But if I target modifiers, maybe I don't want that many textures. Maybe I want a lot less like that. Oh, I want to make, make them longer. So the length profile, length, make them a little longer. How about the width? Um, let's go to the width and make them a lot thicker. The coverage. Okay. Slim. Can play with this. Okay. All right. So, so now, what was the, what was the question? Well, you can make whatever tree you like. You have a reference. <laughs> now, let me show you what you could do. <clears throat> I can go over here to light box fibers right up there, the very right below the fiber mesh title. If I click it, ooh, look at all the cool stuff you can have. So what if I click that one? It applies it, it applies textured fibers. Okay, again, we can modify these. So what if I don't want as many? Right? What if I want them to be um, a little thicker? Let's see if we come down here. 
Okay, maybe a little longer. All right, now, this is not geometry yet. This is OpenGL, right? If I rotate it around, it disappears. If I release, it comes back. It's all OpenGL. So we want to alter this to geometry. The first thing we need to do is go to the top, and we simply say accept it. I can save this profile as well. But for now, we'll say accept it. And there it is. Now it's geometry. So if my see my see my cursor's reacting to it. And when I accepted it, if I go to my subtools, it created a separate subtool. That's right, right there. See, that's my tree. If I turn the eyeball off the tree, the tree goes away. Turn it back on, the tree comes back. If I turn my eyeball off of this one, well, if I'm in this one and turn the eyeball on that comes back okay so now with geometry I can interact with this all right so now I want my insert brush and I want to take the insert brush and I'm going to alter it into something different. So if I come back to my light box, and I'm in the fiber mesh right now, so I want to go to brushes, hit my B key for brushes. There's my, is my insert brush number three, right? So I'm going to target it. And currently, if I just start clicking and dragging, it's going to apply that insert brush anywhere in 3D space. I want it to apply it to these individual leaves. So I need to alter it into what's called a nano brush. So once my insert brush, my newly created insert brush, I've just you know, um, brought in from Maya, I hit the B key. And remember last time we, we did create insert brush? But well, this time we go over to create nano brush in the same panel. If I hit that, now you see those little lines there? You're telling it to, on that object, click and drag and make a, another leaf pattern. It's attaching that to each one of those. Right, so it's attaching. It's going to grab one of these, click and hold, and it attaches that insert brush to each one of those branches. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Well, this is where it gets fun and tricky. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to click and drag it and apply it to all of them at one time. I will select one of those edges there, hold down the space bar key. Now, this is where it gets tricky because depending on what I select, I should have an option on the target saying target all geometry. And I'm trying, and it's a little, I don't know, I will call it buggy, but I'm not sure if it's buggy or maybe I don't quite understand it. But if I I notice that if my geometry is larger, there it is. See that? Target all polys. Watch me. Target all polys. Click it. Click and drag. And it applies that insert brush to every single one of those. So once you've applied it, you don't have to stick with that. We go right back down. 
we're going to go on to nano brush here we have a nano brush menu right underneath the geometry menu and we can play with this the sizing width and height just play with this to get to get something that that um, to add some variety to this offsets you want to offset it a little bit so it's not so yeah yeah now remember this is still OpenGL so we want to commit it to geometry to do so <coughs> under geometry right above it there's an option that says convert BPR to geometry click it now oh it went away strange bring it back oh that's interesting that's that's different convert to PBR there it is lost my texture on it though but it's geometry now I've done this like a hundred times it always keeps my texture this is kind of a fun little okay there it is right there in sub tools okay so that is going to be your homework over the holidays is a build a tree just a tree <laughs> you want more I give you more and the reason I want you to practice on the holidays is because for your for your final assignment you're gonna build you build your you're gonna create your insectoid character that's going to be inside a, 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 a garden or foresty area area and you have to include trees and plants in that area that you custom build in ZBrush so definitely look at concept art I mean I would immediately start looking at um, insect monster concept art maybe kind of throw that into Google insect monster concept art <laughs> get the images hear that all right so we, we're talking about doing guys we're talking about doing organic modeling here talking about doing organic modeling so so your your goal is to is to take at least two insecto a minimum of two insectoid animals or insects and create an insectoid species or alien See that? You're creating an insectoid character. Create an insect. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, for my little bug, I think it goes as realistic as possible. But for whatever reason, can I give it a little arm with the gloves? Well, part of um, I'm thinking part of the assignment is also you have to clothe it. You have to clothe it. Just put a shirt on it and be like, I have like. I'm basically like a mascot. Like a mascot. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, this is why I recommend kind of looking at, you know, what other other artists have done. We, but we can't recreate it. No, have to recreate your own concept. So maybe it's like, like, can we involve simian tricks, like, like simian arts, like human arts? 
Right. But it has to be insectoid. If it makes it look human, like flesh and all that, you can get dinged for it. It's got to be insectoid. I'm not asking for human. I'm asking for an insectoid character. Oh, the right. final sentence is about. Oh, the final sentence is about. Okay. Sorry, I'm working for the next two weeks. Yeah. Small. Or, that, would, that wouldn't work. No. <laughs> no. It'd be, be safer to be more insectoid. Um, how about this? How about um, insectoid concepts? Insectoid concepts. With like, armor. Can you like try to like make it like a, like a realistic Pokemon? You're just gonna get armor like you know, Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably it's thinking, it's thinking. Maybe this is a difficult one for it. <laughs> How about insect characters? Yeah. Oh, oh this is interesting. Insect Characters with armor. Because that can be included as clothing. Some type of clothing or armor. Or shoes. No, see, so, 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 so you, you, you're asking me, yeah, well, that can be, armor, rags can be part of armor. Armor doesn't have to be, like, necessarily Armor doesn't have to be necessarily steel. If you look at some of the Japanese armor, it wasn't really steel like the like the like the English, like the West. Insectoid. These are these are insectoid characters, so they're not like intelligence. Think of it, something with intelligence. I'm saying that this week too. I'm adding on to it. <laughs> the deal has been altered. You feel like you're being treated unfairly. Yeah, Probably <laughs> getting my Darth Vader mode here now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what this looks. Oh, looks like my the internet's getting slow. <laughs> If he doesn't get what you want. But this is something that, that could be a very nice piece for your portfolio. Think about this for your portfolio. So basically, at this point, you're going to be spending your tree. You, when you build your tree, you think about something you're going you're gonna to include in with this particular assignment. Okay, it's really getting slow here, so fortunately. You guys can actually look it up on your systems, but... Um, so insectoid characters. Can our like insect like, include like like amphibians, like like a like a like a chameleon type design or a chameleon is not an insect. Oh, like, I mean, like, there you go. Like, like, is like chame chameleon is not an insect. Okay. Okay, you know, see this is this it's like <laughs> you're making it harder for yourself. I'm trying to make it easy for you. <laughs> some some instructors have you do, you know, like, you know, per animal, per insect. But I figured it'd be more fun just to stick with the insect type of a. I think it'll blend well. Okay, I'm gonna pause recording. All right, here's some insectoid type of with armor, right? And, and like they, they have intelligence. They're like human intelligence with insectoid bodies. Now, let's go into ZBrush and show you how to potentially create armor. All right? So let's go back into our good old friend ZBrush. Let's start a new document. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. There. Come on. Click it. And no. Okay. New document. Let's get a sphere. Let's go over my light box. It's a live bullions. 
Let's go to our projects, and there we go. Get a Z-sphere. Now, in fact, yeah, let's take a Z-sphere. All right. So, a couple different ways of doing this, actually. One is, well, I'll tell you what. I'll show you the, the easier way is utilizing a mask. So, if I want to creating a mask, say I want to create like a helmet of something. Let's come around, come to the side. Alright, I'm just going to join that real quick. Okay, F key. Bring it around. Bring my brush a little smaller. I'm still in my little nano brush mode. Okay, I want to take that shape, and that's going to be kind of like the beginning of, of an helmet, so to speak. Okay, let's go to my B key brush and let's go to my clay build up. All right. I've got a, um, this is not, I could, I could have subdivided this a little bit better. But what we're going to do is we come over here to our subtool and let's see. All right. See right down here at the bottom? It says extract. If I click it, you have, you know, for smoothing options here, if I click extract button, boom. Extract. Okay. All right. Accept it if you like it. There. Take off the mask. Okay. Go to the top. It created a subtool for it right there. So you can use the basic body of your insectoid, use your extract tool to create the armor for it. So if I turn this one off over here, see? <laughs> That's going to be the basis of your clothing for your character. It's that easy. So you'll be using tools like, let's go to my move tool. Or, yeah, the move tool here. We'll go topological move. Make this a little larger. Brush size, right? And you can come in here and do things like stretching it out. All right. Maybe this bottom portion will pull out and come out like so. Like the back of a helmet or something. Just grab the tips of that, right? So you would create your clothing that way as well. Just a little a simple example of, of what uh, how you utilize some of these tools. There are other ways to do this as well that could be a little cleaner, but um, 2020 seems to do a better job with these edges in here. Nice clean edges in here. Is that making sense? Yeah. Adding what? Okay, so adding horns of some sort. Okay. Um, I would use the insert, use the insert brush. Right, you can use the insert brush. So if I come over to Scobity here, I am insert. Let me let me play with some of these insert brushes. I've actually I covered the insert brushes in a, in, a, in an earlier video, but there's some 
fun ones in here like I am I am I am zipper like and you kind of create a zipper across here whoa what <laughs> that zipper is really big oh, that's interesting. yeah <laughs> and I have uh where's my um here that was kind of that was kind of large here let me kind of go backwards on this one I want to take um if you look right up here here's some of your here, here's some of your options all right so I'm just making my brush small I still got I still have the uh, um, a symmetry turned on so I'm going to turn it off made the brush a lot smaller okay let's go back and just right across here and release it okay and the beauty of it is I can come in here and edit this All right it stay it stays connected to your helmet That creepy. Yeah. So <laughs> click and <dr> <laughs> right. What was that? It'll be in sub tools. Yep. 